Alright, so if you guys didn't know, they have this nice little split here where essentially you got one at, you've got one here, one here, and one here. And there's a decent amount of loot there as well. One of the great things about landing here is that there's some really nice uh, hills for surge. So you think about if you pull zone, you can get to sit on top of here and you get sp uh, spire control. So anything that pulls near that spy, you instantly control everything around the area. For a zone like this, you can probably sit up here and look to hold dirty a little bit. Or you can look to make an early rotation and also look to control that sort of spy. So you, but there's also, despite the fact that they're relatively split, despite the fact that you've got one landing here, one here, and then one here, you can rotate to each other really quickly. You've got the launch pad here, and you've got the spire here. So despite the fact that they land separately, if for some reason someone around them is looking for a quick, you know, sneaky kill or something like that, it's actually not that difficult for them to, to survive that kind of, you know, danger. Look at the angles here. Benji's coming in from this way. Shadow's looking this way, and then Joe's looking this way. This guy is already in one hell of a pinch, and uh, the fight's only really just started. So straight away, we're looking at different angles. Joe wins the trade there and then straight away he's got shadow looking to play from behind benji looking to play from there and then it's just an all-out collapse nice and easy and that's their surge sorted look to control vertical space force these guys down really well done to avoid that fight just kind of ramping over them forcing them off that build those guys are forced to basically back down and they can get their rotate on so as we saw before it's a north pulling zone if i'm them I now don't have to worry about getting Surge, but if I did have to worry about Surge, I would immediately hook to that Spire, sit on top of it, and basically control all of the sight lines around here. You get so much visibility with that Spire, like you do at any other Spire. Now look at Dead Side. Dead Side, very dead. This is normal in EU, and honestly normal in stacked games, because everyone's worried about their Surge. They're kind of grouped to central areas. Um, but in EU, you do tend to see this quite a lot as well. So if I, again, if I'm seeing this zone, I'm immediately thinking, ah, uh, Let's try get into maybe the top of Orchard, or um, even looking to control Spire and then using the Spire to rotate later. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Are they going to get on top of the Spire? No, they're not, but they're going to sit sort of next to it. Right on dead side here. No one really around them in this sort of area, as you'd pretty much expect because of uh, zone pulling all the way north here. And they pull zone and immediately hook it to center. They get to control the top of this building. But straight away, this was the place to control, right? Because you get really good visibility. They're not going to need Surge because they've got their three kills and they did decent damage for this for those kills. We'll 4x this. is essentially just going to be uh, them farming up. And we'll get into the late game and see how they play late game. And because they got so central in, uh, in third zone, they have to make basically zero rotation to get into, f into fourth. Very normal sort of play, trying to trying to push yourself center of, of third to make the rotation of fourth as easy as possible. And then now they are setting up. And this is where the idea of recalibration is, is sort of showing itself. You've got a lot of people clustered around this side here, despite this side being dead side of, uh, of, of third zone. And the reason for that is just being the zone pulled so far this way, everyone who is center of third basically is now grouping to this part of fourth zone so those guys are part of that but because they've got four pads they shouldn't be too worried about getting caught up in that congestion because they can clear it with uh with their pad now in a situation where you've got one pad you should always try and either recycle or run to half half because padding first moving is much better than uh than half half you should be able to make a rotation to half half on foot and it's exactly what they look to do which i really like I'd prefer they stay high and above the builds. They have a little bit more control about what's going on with them. And you get to cut line of sight for anyone who's sitting underneath you. So for anyone who's holding them here, they can cut line of sight by just ramping over them. It's essentially if you've got a guy sitting in a box and you ramp over him, immediately you're going to cut line of sight. So that's essentially what I'm saying to try, try and do. And 11 kills... With only three going into late game means they killed eight players going into late game, which is a, which is a lot of kills for late game. All right, they pull first moving, but so does everyone else. Already makes his pad box. I like that from Shadow. Nice pad. It immediately looks to have to take height. It's not even not even a, a second thought. Pad to front side, turn around, look for height. No deliberation about it. No second thoughts. It was just straight away. Those guys on height didn't quite get get across to cover that space far enough. 
they land on the highest team, the most established team, and from there they can control height. Super simple, but really, really well executed. So there's still eight kills to get. So let's uh, let's see if see how they they go about getting those. But essentially, from here, it should just be all about the pressure. It should just be constant, constant pressure. Now zone does pull far. And immediately we saw Benji there pad down. So essentially using um, using the pad there like we saw people use the um, the crash pads back in the, or the bounces back in the day. Whenever, which was the case when you play quite high up and a zone pulled all the way far, you let people establish ahead of you. And then if you're up on height back here, you essentially just bounce padded onto these guys and then build back up. So essentially you can hold height really, really easily um, and, on, and on minimal mats. But look at the way that they're creating angles. It's not, it's not shooting down at people. One thing I really hate about, about watching people play height late game is the constant just shooting down at a 90 degree angle. When you play height, you've got to think about the way that you would look to hold someone off if you were getting shot at from height. If you're managing as a guy on height to essentially be able to come down and put enough angle on them to both put pressure on their, uh, on their roof and then their wall, you now have Storm coming in as a pinch. You've got your damage coming there, and you've got Storm coming in, coming in from behind them to create a pinch. And now this guy either has to ramp up, or he has to go around. And the one thing that you should always think about when you're playing late game, and you're putting pressure down, you say you might be missing out on kills, that's not a bad thing. If you're missing out on kills, it means that someone else is getting the kills, and you're still creating opportunities to, to get placement points. So you might be missing out on them, but they're still dying as a result of your pressure. So the pressure kind of has to stop. So so it's going to now come down to to these guys proving that they can they can wipe these teams late game here. So I think this is going to be a nice thing to watch to see how they play ag aggressive late game because obviously Benji Fish is one of the best fighters, but Shadow and Joe are not to be underestimated as fighters as well. So when they drop down here, watching how they interact with each other, the angles that they're trying to get, um, not just coming down and playing separately as two solos, but actually trying to play as a team, I think that's going to be what's going to be interesting about this end here, because they've still, they've still got six kills to get gut here going into, into final zone, and as we look through their ammo, they've basically got nothing left. So it looks like Benji's going to be the first one to drop down and look for something. Not being over-aggressive there, he could have jumped in and looked for that, but no, plays it smart. Doesn't look to be over-aggressive when he doesn't need to be. And again, doesn't look to be over-aggressive when he doesn't need to be. Gets the Siphon mats, and from there, he's got enough to drop these guys down. All of them still up as a team. All about the team here. They're going to lose the heal off. But they've still got a couple kills to go and get. So Benji hits someone hard enough to obviously get the final. And Shadow... Oh, it just doesn't get the shot off, unfortunately. 